Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got another product shootout for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm looking at DDR4 3600 RAM. Now, this is actually a follow-up to a previous shootout I posted that looked at DDR4 3200, 3600, and 4000 RAM. Of course, I did find there was a difference between those kits, but I decided that there were a few too many variables in play because of the various timings that each of those kits used to really come to firm conclusions about which speed you should choose. So this time around, I'm focusing in on 3600 megahertz RAM, like I stated, but I'm gonna be using kits with three different timing configurations. One is gonna be a premium kit, the Dominator Platinum RGB, that comes in at DDR4 3600, 16, 18, 18, 36. Then we have another one in the middle from Patriot Viper, the RGB kit that comes in at 17, 19, 1939. And then I have a third kit from Corsair, their Vengeance RGB, that comes in at 18, 19, 1939. So there are actually two different comparisons I'll be able to make. These two kits differ only in the CL rating, going from 18 to 17. And that is typically the timing that you'll see marketed when you buy RAM. So the other timings are a little bit hard to find. You have to dig into the spec sheet to find those, but the CL rating is almost always listed. So between these two kits, I will really be able to hone in on does it matter between 17 and 18? Can you actually perceive a difference in benchmarks? And then this kit will actually lower all of those timings. The 16, 18, 18, 36 is actually lower on all four counts versus the two other kits. So that'll show you, well, do I really need to bring down all those timings to get a bigger delta in my benchmarks? Now, I will also be looking at RGB quality between these three kits. And, you know, they have different RGB systems. Corsair was really first out of the gate with RGB RAM. And I really commend them for that. But there are a lot of other companies out there. And Viper has the Viper RGB uh, kit here that is actually pretty cool looking as well and typically sells for a little bit less. So I will be talking about price when I get to the conclusion to talk about not only the performance you get per dollar, but maybe the looks you get per dollar as well. Now, I will be testing on two different platforms. First, my Ryzen 9 3900X system, which I'm showing here. And I also have a Core i9-9900K system. Of course, that's an Intel platform. And it will be interesting to see if the AMD versus the Intel platform makes a difference in terms of how much the various timings impact the benchmarks. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at our RAM in this test and then get into those benchmarks. First up, we have the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro Kit with a glossy white heatsink. Then we get to the Patriot Viper RGB Kit, which has a matte black heatsink. And then we get to the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB Kit, which uses a premium heatsink crafted from aluminum that stands quite a bit taller thanks to the additional fins. When you're buying a kit, it's often hard to find the timings in the specs, but here they are printed on the back of this Dominator Platinum Kit. Unfortunately, Patriot Viper does not do that with its kit. All we know is that it's a DDR4-3600 CL17 kit. In terms of the RGB lighting, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, but I like Corsair's Vengeance RGB Pro Kit the most, thanks to its light pipe design. It blends the lighting of the discrete RGBs to give you a continuous stream of light, and I really like that effect. This is the default rainbow that actually looks very, very cool and blends in well with a lot of patterns. Turning to the Patriot Viper RGB kit, we see a different default lighting pattern. This goes from the center outwards. I don't think it works as well in sequence because the two RAM sticks seem out of sync. You can, of course, apply different patterns in your motherboard software. Finally, we get to Corsair's Dominator Platinum RGB kit, which uses 12 Capellex RGBs per module and truly accentuates those individual RGBs thanks to the heatsink's design. Now, I don't like this quite as much as the Vengeance RGB Pro, but it is quite bright and distinct. Now, I'm going to turn back to the Patriot Viper RGB kit here for a moment to highlight a problem with its RGB design. In short, the plastic cover and metal heatsink don't meet up, allowing some of the RGBs to bleed through. This is something Patriot should fix in a future redesign. All right, before I get into the benchmarks, I actually have to share a discovery I made that's going to help out a lot of AMD users out there. And that is that if you have a RAM kit with an odd numbered cast latency, that's the CL rating, it will not run at that rating. It's going to round up to the next even number. Now, this sounds really strange, but it's true. And I did check with both Patriot and Corsair on this. And here's the deal. 
AMD implemented something called gear down mode back when Ryzen was launched in 2017 to help with memory compatibility. All you have to do is shut off that compatibility mode, which is unfortunately on by default on every motherboard ship for AMD processors, and you will be able to run odd numbered cast latencies. I've tested this on cast latencies of 15, 17, 19, and it was true across the board. It always rounds up to the next even number, which costs you a little bit of speed. Now, the only kit here that has an odd numbered cast latency is the Patriot Viper kit. It's 17, 19, 19. So by default, it was running at 18, 19, 19. And I did have to go back and run all my benchmarks again once I got this figured out after talking to Patriot Viper and Corsair. Corsair runs at uh, cast 16 and cast 18. So it wasn't an issue with these two kits, but I have used some of their DDR4 3000 RAM, which is CAS 15, and that causes the same problem. On AMD motherboards, it typically runs at CAS 16. So it, it is an issue for some Corsair kits, just not the ones I tested. And that means it's really a universal problem. And if you have an AMD motherboard, please shut this off now, unless you're running a really old CPU. In fact, I went back and reran a bunch of my benchmarks on the other kits as well, and even those improved without gear down mode enabled. So it's basically a free speed up if you have a modern AMD Ryzen CPU. You got to dig down in the RAM settings and shut that off. It's in the RAM timing section of the UEFI. So it's just something that I came upon. It cost me an extra day of work, but I think this is something a lot of you out there probably don't realize. You have an odd numbered cast latency and you're not able to hit it. Just turn off that gear down mode and get a free speed boost. All right, with that said, let's get into the benchmarks. Now I'm gonna start with Geekbench 4, which has some dedicated memory benchmarks built into it. And I wanna point out that RAM bandwidth and RAM latency are thrown around a lot in marketing, but they don't tell you anything individually. You have to take them together. Note that the latency certainly goes down as we move to a tighter CL rating. And the same thing goes for RAM bandwidth. It goes up, generally speaking. But the RAM copy speeds are a little bit all over the place, particularly on the Intel system. So even knowing bandwidth and latency, you can't necessarily predict those copy speeds. And I want to point out that that Patriot Viper RGB kit is going to be showing up in the lead more than once in this roundup, which is maybe a little bit surprising to some of you and certainly was surprising to me. But I do think there's something to this RAM copy score, and we're going to see this repeated in a few more benchmarks. Let's take a look. So here are the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmarks, which do factor in those memory benchmarks I just showed you. So not surprisingly, the Patriot Viper RGB is in the lead on the Intel system. But otherwise, the results are fairly predictable with the Corsair Dominator kit running ahead of the other two in terms of both single core and multi core speeds on the AMD system. Now, turning to Geekbench 5, which has some updates relevant to modern systems, we again see the Patriot Viper RGB in the lead on the Intel system. As for the AMD system, well, it's pretty much flat across the board, so apparently the cast latency simply does not matter for this test. Now, I know some of you are pretty tempted to also compare AMD versus Intel in these benchmarks, and I did use CPUs that are in the same price class, so that's fair enough. You're going to see that AMD and Intel will trade blows, and they both have their own distinct advantages. But Intel certainly doesn't have the advantage in Cinebench. This is AMD's absolute favorite benchmark to roll out, and sure enough, the 3900X is in the lead by quite a lot, nearly 50% faster in this benchmark. Note that the RAM speed doesn't matter that much, particularly on Intel, but even on AMD, we do see the CL18 kit falling a little bit behind, but the CL17 and CL16 kit are basically tied. Turning to V-Ray, we have an anomalous result where the CL16 kit from Corsair is in the lead on the AMD system and is far behind on the Intel system. But if I average across the two systems, the actual winner here is the Patriot Viper kit with the Corsair CL18 kit way behind overall. Now turning to my gaming benchmarks, I start with 3 Mark Time Spy. Now keep in mind, I'm using a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti in all these tests, and that really is what dominates the score here, and that's why they're so similar. Yes, I do see that the Corsair Vengeance CL18 kit is a little bit behind in the AMD system, and that's probably in part because it's behind in the CPU score. But overall, again, I see a trend. If you average across the two systems, the Patriot Viper kit is actually in the lead. 
Now turning to Rise of the Tomb Raider, where I did a true in-game benchmark rather than using the canned benchmark, I found that results were pretty much flat across the board based on RAM timings. I do see a lot of fluctuation in the minimums, but I think that comes down more to the game engine than to the RAM. I will say, of course, here is where you're going to see the advantage of the Intel system. It's way ahead across the board, but I don't see any real trend in terms of the memory affecting that. Now here's Dirt Rally, which does have a built-in benchmark that really taxes the CPU. And you can see, again, not a lot going on in terms of memory, except that we do see a trend where the CL18 kit from Corsair is again a step behind. So whereas the CL17 and CL16 kits are really neck and neck, we can see that this is probably beyond the margin of error, particularly on the AMD system. Now here's the multiplayer mode of Battlefield 4 benchmarked. I like to use this because it does tax the CPU quite a lot. And while the minimums are all over the place, which is to be expected when you're using live multiplayer matches, the averages are pretty even. I do see again, there is some trend for the CL17 kit to be ahead and the CL18 kit to be a little bit behind, at least on the Intel system this time around. Note that this is the only game benchmark where the AMD system was actually a step ahead of its Intel counterpart. Now here we get to the graphical feast that is Battlefield 5. I'm benching the single player campaign at 1440p. And in this type of benchmark, I always expect that the graphics card is all that matters, but that is not true. Clearly on the AMD system, faster memory makes a difference. And it's true to a certain extent on the Intel system as well with the CL17 kit grabbing the lead and the CL16 kit being just a step behind. Overall, I do think we have seen a trend. CL18 is holding back both of these systems. While the Patriot Viper CL17 kit seems to generally be right on par with Corsair's Dominator Platinum CL16 kit. All right, well, that was pretty surprising. I know some of you guys are gonna come and say, I did it totally wrong. There's no way that the CL17 kit from Patriot could beat the CL16 Dominator Platinum from Corsair. Well, it did. In the majority of tests, it was as fast or faster than Corsair's very expensive kit here, despite having a looser CL timing. Now, I think what this comes down to is the sub timings. There's a whole lot of optimization that can go into a RAM kit, and Patriot has clearly done it with its Viper RGB kit. So given that this is just $100 versus $130 and $230, it's the obvious winner when it comes to price performance. If that's what you care about, go Patriot. Now, in terms of looks, I actually score this at the bottom of the pack. I did not like its RGB implementation. I thought there was too much bleed through of the lighting through the heatsink. I also thought the general design of the heatsink wasn't that attractive. And the RGBs themselves weren't that smooth. In terms of the animations, it was a little bit more blocky versus Corsair, particularly the Vengeance RGB Pro. These remain my favorite RAM sticks. If all you care about is looks, particularly due to that white heat sink, which is so slick. And then you get the really, really smooth animations and compatibility with every motherboard out there. You get a little bit less performance than Patriot Viper, but it looks great. So if you have any comments or questions, please post them down below. As always, I do appreciate a like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.